right, thank you, Brooke. And again, Brad Bobian, um, Administrator for Long Range City Planning at the Department of Metropolitan Development um, at the city. So as Brooke mentioned, it's important to track what we're doing. Um, we put on paper what we want to do. We want to make sure that we actually do it. None of us get into planning just to make a plan. We, make, we get into planning to actually make um, change happen. Um, but to that end, at the end of the day, we said even if we checked off everything that we said we'd do, has the city improved? Have all of our neighborhoods benefited from that? That is what we wanted to measure, um, to, to measure the actual impact of what Plan 2020 was about. And so that's the idea, um, the, the genesis anyway, behind what plan or b what, what Indie Vitals um, is. Um, backing up, Brooke really described a collective impact initiative. And I know that you love that term or you hate that term, but that's really what Plan 2020 was about. It was about bringing all of our partners um, together. And if you're familiar with collective impact theory, an important piece of that is you have a vision. That's what the bicentennial agenda is. We all rally towards that vision. But you also have the shared data, the shared metric system, so that we're all kind of marching to the same tune, um, to the same goals. And so that's one idea behind um, Indie Vitals. Another issue, and this is kind of getting a detour behind the scenes in what's going on in the city planning world, um, is that the era of city planners being centralized in city government is long gone. It's been gone for a few decades. Um, actually, in city government, your city government here in Indianapolis, we've got four people that are responsible for the long range planning for the city. We have been losing people, staff positions basically from, for decades. Um, but as a community, we really haven't. There are dozens of organizations across, the across town um, that do long range city planning. They excluded cities, redevelopment commissions, the airport authority has staff planners, local initiative support corporation is a nonprofit that has done a lot of neighborhood planning um, recently with quality of life plans with Great Places 2020. Um, schools do planning, so there's lots of people that do planning. Um, and so in the future, my view is that government-sponsored planning is less about us doing it and more about us making sure that's coordinated. Um, and that's really an evolution shift from defining city planning from capital C, big C, city government planning to small c, city community level planning. And that's philosophically kind of what Plan 2020 ushered in in the city planning world. So back to my metaphors. <laughs> so we want to measure um, impact, but more importantly, we also want to coordinate planning activities across the city. Those are kind of the two objectives that we defined. Now, if you work with data, one problem with it is that depending on how you draw the boundaries, you will get completely different stories, right? Sort of like a pizza, here's my metaphor. Um, depending on how you cut this pizza on the screen, you may find that the pizza has lots of olives or no olives and you may find that it has lots of green peppers or has no green peppers. And so if you're working in a piece of this pizza, a piece of Indianapolis, a square inch of that pizza, depending on how you cut it, it may taste like it has olives in it, it may taste like it has green peppers in it. So um, that's a challenge with data, that's just an inherent challenge that we have with data. Now there's nothing wrong with cutting the pizza every any way you want. There's nothing wrong with square slices or triangle slices or anything in between. But if your goal is to have people understand the pizza in the same way, understand what it tastes like, you, ha you really have to have some sort of consistent boundaries. So in our case, we have a 403 square mile pizza called Indianapolis Marion County. Um, and we have the same olive and green pepper problem. <laughs> this is just 11 ways we in local government divide up Marion County. So police district, police beats, code enforcement districts, public works districts, council districts, voting precincts. There's dozens of more that I could put up here, but it looks like this. And so if your goal is to pick one of these areas and work together, you may have a suite of a dozen different government officials that are working together. It doesn't help us make impact. Um, and so that's one challenge we face. Now you put on top of that how neighborhoods define themselves. We have this system called the Registered Community Organization System that nonprofits and anyone actually can sign up for, and that's how that, we use that primarily to, to, for zoning notification purposes. There, there's 800 organizations in that, so Marion County is cut up into 800, oftentimes overlapping different ways, and so clearly um, that does not help um, us tell a story. And if you look at that, it sort of looks like this. And this is the inside of a computer processor, the inside of your phone that you have in your pocket. 
which sort of makes sense because cities are incredibly complex things. They're incredibly complex social and economic beings, right? Um, this is the first Intel chip um, ever back in 1971, by the way. So, but unlike a computer processor, cutting up our pizza or our city doesn't really make us smarter. It doesn't help us get more things done like a computer processor does. It doesn't help us work together across sectors, across public, private, nonprofit, philanthropic, because no one sees the same story. And so we did the most political thing that you can ever do, and that's draw lines on a map. And I will guarantee that probably most of our discussion afterwards will be about how we drew these lines on the map, right? Um, so we did draw lines to define 99 different geographies. They are not really neighborhoods. They're not small neighborhoods. They're not subdivisions. We have thousands of those across Marion County. You can't get data for those, and we can't plan and administer for a thousand different unique geographies. So they're really groupings of neighborhoods, neighborhood districts, neighborhood areas, community areas, whatever you want to call them. We shorten it to neighborhoods, but it's really groupings of neighborhoods. So if you can get your mind around that, and that's not your individual little neighborhood or your individual subdivision that you live in, it's kind of the broader area you live in, um, this concept will make a little more sense for you. So now, where did these come from? So if you can accept that they're not your individual neighbor, they're groupings, where did they come from? Well, we actually resurrected something that Mayor Peterson was working on in the waning days of his administration. Mayor Peterson did not expect to lose. Um, and so there were grand plans that they were working on that were gonna be for the, the Peterson third term. Um, and it was really led by former Deputy Mayor for Neighborhood Steve Campbell, if, if you know Steve. Um, and it was to be a way by which government administered city services by which government communicated. It was not an attempt to redraw how neighborhoods define themselves. This was a government administration sort of district process. And so we started with, and where did those come from? Um, Steve is a historic map fanatic, and so he had all sorts of historic maps of Indianapolis, Marion County. If you get into Indy Vitals and you ask where Gallaudet comes from, Gallaudet's a neighborhood in Franklin Township, where did Gallaudet come from? Well, at some point in history, there's a little dot on a map that said Gallaudet. So it, some of our neighborhood names at least come from historic maps. There's also major barriers, interstates, rivers, things that really divide um, neighborhoods. Um, he did look at the registered community organizations, so how neighborhoods define themselves, then also at the excluded city and the included town boundaries um, that have the political um, um, geography. So we took those neighborhoods boundaries that they had up that they had created in the Peterson days and updated them. We zoomed in and drew them down to the parcel level. Um, and so every single parcel, individual parcel in Marion County now has a single neighborhood. The way that they had drawn before is kind of very loose. Um, and so we drew them to be a little more exact. We also zoomed in to aerial photography and looked at development patterns. And so that influenced the line a little bit. Was a subdivision, was the line down the middle of a subdivision? Um, do the lot sizes, development patterns, commercial, residential change substantially? Um, we looked at that to kind of make that determination of what side of the street kind of line goes on. And then we also try to consolidate some very small geographies that we have data problems for. When you get down to a subdivision or small neighborhood level, it's hard to get reliable, consistent data for. And so we wanted to make sure that we had groupings of neighborhoods um, that made sense that we could actually get data for. And then we also split up a few large ones that were out there, and we ended up with 99. There's no magic number behind 99. We did not have a target, but that's what we ended up with. Um, so getting back um, to Indy Vitals, um, Indy Vitals, for one, allows the Plan 2020 team to see if all of our neighborhoods across Marion County are improving or not. But that's not why we built it. That's kind of a side benefit. And that may have been the genesis, but that wasn't really wasn't the purpose we invested in this sort of project. Um, we built it with the intent of making data a collective impact tool. Um, so whether you're a neighborhood activist, a community development corporation um, leader like Lee, a public policy maker, a community funder, um, you can see the same story because we've drawn the same boundaries. You can see the same need. Um, and hopefully that means that your organization, your passion can respond um, to that same story that means if everyone sees the same story, everyone's responding with their passion to that same need, we actually have more impact because data is coordinating our actions, our investments. Now early on we had internal debate about whether we could best promote collective impact by simply getting everyone to use the same data source, like Savvy, or um, if we could best promote it 
you know, that way people could draw their own boundaries and use all the data. And that, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that. Um, savvy, raw savvy actually allows you, um, for the most part, to do that. Um, so that might make the site more useful for individual organizations, but it doesn't resolve our pizza problem of making the data more impactful for the collective by telling the same story. So the point isn't really where we draw the lines. We can argue, and I promise, we can argue all day about whether the lines go. I promise we can do that, and we have. Uh, the point is that by drawing those boundaries, wherever they're drawn, we have framed a consistent story that everyone across sector across the city can see. And we think that's a powerful tool um, for rallying people and organizations around the most pressing needs of all of the diverse places of Marion County, of making the most the, of making the work of all of us more relevant to the actual neighborhoods, that, the diverse places that we work in.